As the Islamic State slaughters Christians in the Middle East, more nations commit to stopping them. The new Thai constitution is unveiled, and LG looks to change the way we think about selfies. These stories are coming up next. This is the Asia Brief. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, April 21st, 2015. My name is Steve Miller, and it's my pleasure to be here with you today. So thank you so much for joining me. Coming up first, a new video has surfaced depicting members affiliated with the Islamic State beheading and shooting Ethiopian Christians. It was a chilling scene to watch, but as ISIS increases its violence, other nations around the world are banding together to fight back. First, Malaysia's Islamic Development Department set up a committee designed to combat the spread of terrorist ideology in schools and the internet. The committee will present information to correct misconceptions about jihad or holy wars as a way to combat the group using misinformation to lure young recruits. Quote, having free access to information and following their emotions are some of the reasons that students are vulnerable to militant doctrine. So we are working to clarify the true meaning of jihad to them, end quote, said the committee's director general, Othman Mustafa. While it is true that Malaysia's youth utilize the internet most in that country, some feel that that may be only part of the problem. The focus must be also placed on those spreading the false ideology to them. In related news, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation reported on Monday that Australia and Iran have reached a tentative intelligence sharing agreement to combat the Islamic State militants fighting in the Middle East. Foreign Minister Julie Bishop said, quote, it was an informal arrangement whereby we'd share intelligence that would give us information on the Australians who are taking part. I believe Iran has information that we would seek, and they were very agreeable to share that information with us. End quote. As the Islamic State continues its global assault, we will see more programs and partnerships such as these. Getting accurate information to those that are susceptible must be made a priority as the Islamic State is not representative of Islam, and the more that's disseminated, the better. Nearly a year has passed since Thailand underwent a bloodless coup. Then-General and now Prime Minister Prayut Chunacha vowed to make changes, and now we're starting to see some. The 36-member Constitution Drafting Committee, appointed by the junta, submitted the draft constitution for debate. Critics say the new governing document is anti-democratic, as it includes provisions that would allow for a non-elected person to serve as prime minister and a proportional representation electoral system, which according to some, would weaken larger political parties and force the creation of coalitions. Spokesman for the conservative Democratic Party told Reuters News, there are a lot of issues with the new constitution that may not be suitable for Thai politics, including the weakening of political parties. We've passed our concerns and hope they will be raised during the debate. Debate on the constitution will continue throughout the week and conclude on Sunday. Proposed changes can then be made for up to 30 days. As the nation nears the one-year anniversary of the coup, major political leaders say they aren't planning any demonstrations. Electronics maker LG is set to launch its new flagship smartphone later this month in its home nation of South Korea. While not as ubiquitous as the Samsung Galaxy line of smartphones, the technology manufacturer is hoping a major improvement to its onboard camera will capture the selfie generation. Overall, the camera has been improved by 50% over previous models. So says the company. The rear camera sports a 16 megapixel lens with an aperture of 1.8, making it an incredibly fast lens when taking images in dark places. The front facing camera will have a resolution of 8 megapixels, the highest ever in South Korea. Now, when you sit down and really think about it, two things come to mind. With this device having so much image capturing capabilities, how much longer? are consumers going to spend their hard-earned cash on cameras when they carry around a phone with so many megapixels? Which brings me to point number two. 
If all we do is snap a picture, share it on Instagram or Facebook, do we really need that high of a resolution on a simple device? Well, my friends, those are today's stories. I hope you'll take a moment to leave your thoughts in the comments on Facebook and Twitter. To keep up with more news from the region, please follow Asian News Weekly on Facebook or Twitter. You can also send an email to the show with your questions, your comments, and your feedback. Our email address is podcast at asiannewsweekly.net. If you enjoyed today's show, please share it with your friends. And if you haven't, subscribe. It's free and easy to do. Just go to our website, asiannewsweekly.net, or subscribe in your favorite podcast application like iTunes or Stitcher. Well, my friends, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Steve Miller, reminding you to be true to yourself and to always be awesome.